before reinforcement learning. After reinforcement learning. What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renault and in this video we're going to be going through a bit of a crash course on reinforcement learning. Now if you've ever worked with deep learning or machine learning before you know the two key forms are supervised and unsupervised learning. Now reinforcement learning is a little bit different to that because you tend to train in a live environment. Now there's a really easy way to remember the core concepts in reinforcement learning. All you need to remember is Area 51. Now you're probably thinking what the hell does Area 51 have to do with reinforcement learning? Well the area in Area 51 stands for Action, Reward, Environment and Agent. These are the four key things you need in any reinforcement learning model. Now in this video we're going to be covering all of those key concepts. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So in this video we're going to cover everything you need to get started with reinforcement learning. We're going to start out by creating an environment using OpenAI Gym. We're then going to build a deep learning model using TensorFlow and Keras. This same model will then pass to Keras RL in order to train our reinforcement learning model using policy-based learning. Now, in terms of how we're going to be doing it, we're going to be largely working within Python and specifically, we're going to be working inside of a Jupyter Notebook. We'll start out by building our environment using OpenAI Gym. We'll then build our deep learning model, again, using TensorFlow and Keras. And then once we've built that model, we're then going to train it using Keras RL. We'll then be able to take that same model, save it down into memory and reload it for when we want to deploy it into production. Ready to get to it? Let's do it. So there's a couple of key things that we need to do in order to build our deep reinforcement learning model. So specifically, we need to first up install our dependencies. Then what we're going to do is build an environment with OpenAI Gym with just a couple of lines of code. So this is going to allow us to see the environment that we're actually using reinforcement learning in later on. Then we're gonna build a deep learning model with Keras. So we're specifically going to be using the sequential API there. And then what we're going to do is train that Keras model using Keras reinforcement learning. And last but not least, we're gonna delete it all and reload that agent from memory. So this is going to allow you to deploy it into production if you want to later on. So first up, let's install our dependency. So what we're going to need here is TensorFlow, Keras, Keras RL, as well as OpenAI Gym. So what we've done is we've installed our four key dependencies. So we've used pip install and specifically we've installed tensorflow 2.3.0. We've installed OpenAI Gym, so that's just Gym. We've installed Keras and we've also installed Keras RL2. So those are all our dependencies now done and installed. Now what we can actually go and do is set up a random environment with OpenAI Gym. Now OpenAI Gym comes with a bunch of pre-built environments that you can use to test out reinforcement learning on. So if we actually head on over to gym.openai.com, you can see there's a bunch of random environments. So here we've got um, some algorithms, we've got Atari games. So if you wanted to build Atari or video game style reinforcement learning engines, you could. Um, we're going to be working on these classic control ones and specifically, we're going to be using Cartpole. Um, and so the whole idea behind Cartpole is that you want to basically move this cart down the bottom here in order to balance the pole up there. So the whole idea is that for each step you take, you get a point with a maximum of 200 points. So ideally what we're going to see when we start off is with our random steps, we're not gonna get anywhere near 200. But once we use deep learning and reinforcement learning, we ideally should get a much closer to actually hitting our final result. Now we've got two movements, we can either go left or right. So what we're going to see is when we create our environment, we're gonna have two actions available, either left or right. If you work in different reinforcement learning environments, you might have a different number of actions that you can take. So for example, you might go up or down, left or right, if you're working with other things. So now what we're going to do is set up this environment so you can work with it within Python. So if we go back to our Jupyter Notebook, let's start setting that up. So the first thing that we need to do is import our dependencies. So in order to do that, we're going to import OpenAI Gym and we're also going to import the random library so we can take a bunch of random steps. So those are our two key dependencies imported. So, and this is specifically for our OpenAI Gym. So we've imported Gym and we've also imported random. Now what we can go and do is actually set up that environment. So that's our environment setup. So what we went and did there is we used the OpenAI Gym library and specifically we used 
the make method to build our cart pole environment. So remember that was the cart pole environment that we saw here. We then extracted the states that we've got. So this is available through ENV, which is our environment that we just set up, observation space dot shape. So we're taking a look at all the different states that we've got available within our environment. And we've also extracted the action. So if you take a look, we're getting that from our action space and we can see that we're going to have a specific number of actions. So if we take a look at our states, we've basically got four states available. And if we take a look at our actions, we've got two actions. So basically those are left or right, moving our carpool left or right. Now what we can actually go and do is actually visualize what it looks like when we're taking random steps within our carpool environment. So ideally what we'll see is that our carpool is just sort of moving randomly because we're taking random steps in order to get a specific score. So remember with each step that we take where our cart pole hasn't fully fallen over, we're gonna get one point with a maximum of 200 points. So let's build our random environment. All right, so we've written a bit of code there. Now, what we're actually going to do is start by breaking this down from here. So the first thing that we're going to do is render our environment. So this is going to allow us to see our cart in action when it's moving left and right. Then what we're doing is we're taking a random step. So we're either going left or right. So zero or one basically represents one of those steps. So we're just taking a random choice to see how that impacts our environment. Then what we're doing is we're actually applying that action to our environment and we're getting a bunch of stuff as a result of that. So we're getting our state, we're getting our reward, we're getting whether or not we've completed the game, so whether or not we've failed or whether or not we've passed, and we're also getting a bunch of information. Then based on our step, we're gonna get a reward. So remember, if we take a step in the correct direction and we haven't failed, we get one point. This basically allows us to accumulate our entire reward. Now, if we fail or if we get to the end of the game, then done is going to be set to true. So what we're doing is we're continuously taking steps until we're complete. So we reset the entire environment up here and then we're also printing out our final reward. So ideally what we'll get is the episode number as well as our score. So let's go on ahead and run that and see our episodes live and in action. Actually, it looks like we've got a bug there, episode. All right, so you can see our cart's moving and it's moving randomly and you can see that our pole's sort of flailing about. Now, what we're actually logging out is the score each time. So it looks like we're surpassing a specific threshold and we're failing. So we're only getting up to a maximum of about 38. So that's our maximum score. Now, ideally what we wanna be able to get is all the way up to 200. And this is where reinforcement learning comes in. So basically our deep learning model is going to learn the best action to take in that specific environment in order to maximize our score. Now this all starts with a deep learning model. So let's go on ahead and start creating our deep learning model. Now, in order to do that, we first up need to import some dependencies and these are largely going to be our TensorFlow Keras dependencies. So let's go on ahead and import those. So we've imported our dependencies. So we've specifically first up imported NumPy. So this is going to allow us to work with NumPy arrays. Then we've imported the sequential API. So this is going to allow us to build a sequential model with Keras. Then we've also imported two different types of layers. So specifically we've imported our dense node as well as our flatten node. And last but not least, we've imported the Atom optimizer. So that's going to be the optimizer that we use to train our deep learning model. Now what we can go and do is actually go and build that model. So we're gonna build this wrapped inside of a function so we can reproduce this model whenever we need to. So that's our build model function defined. 
So what we've basically gone and done is created a new function called build model. And to that, we're gonna pass two arguments. So specifically our states. So these were the states that we extracted from our environment up here. And we're also going to pass through our actions. So these are going to be the two different actions that we've got in our carpole environment. In order to build our deep learning model, we're first instantiating our sequential model. Then we're passing through the flatten node. And specifically to that, we're going to be passing through a flat node, which contains our different states. So remember our four different states that we had. Then we're adding two dense nodes to start building out our deep learning model with a ReLU activation function. And last but not least, our last dense node has our actions. So this is basically going to mean that we pass through our states at the top and we pass through our actions down the bottom. So ideally what we should be able to do is train our model based on the states coming through to determine the best actions to maximize our reward or our score that we can see here. So let's go on ahead and create an instance of that model just by using that build model function. And we can also visualize what the model looks like using the model.summary function. So you can see here that we're passing through our four different states. We've got 24 dense nodes, 24 dense nodes. So these are gonna be our fully connected layers within our neural network. And then last but not least, we're gonna be passing out our two different actions that we wanna take within our environment. Now what we can go and do is take this deep learning model and actually train it using Keras RL. So first up, we need to import our Keras RL dependencies. So let's go on ahead and do that. So those are our dependencies imported. So we've imported three key things here. So we've imported our deep Q network agent. So basically there's a bunch of different agents within the Keras RL environment. So you can see we've got a DQN agent, a NAFA agent, a DDPG, Sasa, SEM. So all of these are different agents that you can use to train your reinforcement learning model. We're gonna be using DQN for this particular video, but try testing out some of the others and see how you go. Now, what we also have is a specific policy. So within reinforcement learning, you've got different styles. So you've got value-based reinforcement learning and you've also got policy-based reinforcement learning. So in this case, we're gonna be using policy-based reinforcement learning and the specific policy that we're going to be using is the Boltzmann Q policy, which you can see here. Now, the last thing that we've gone and imported is sequential memory. So for our DQN agent, we're going to need to maintain some memory and the sequential memory class is what allows us to do that. So now what we can go and do is set up our agent. And again, we're gonna wrap this inside of a function so we can reproduce it when we wanna reload it from memory. So let's go on ahead and build that function. So that's our function defined. Now what we've basically done is we've named our function build agent and to that we pass through our model. So this is our deep learning model that we specified up here. And we're also passing through the different actions that we can take. So those were the two different actions left or right that we had available within our environment. Then we set up our policy, we set up our memory and we set up our DQN agent. And to that DQN agent, we actually pass through our deep learning model, our memory, our policy, as well as a number of other keyword arguments. So then what we do is we return that DQN agent. So let's go on ahead and actually use this DQN agent to actually now go and train our reinforcement learning model. So first up, we wanna start out by instantiating our DQN model, then we're gonna compile it, and then we're going to go ahead and fit it. All right, and there you go. So you can see that our DQN model is now starting to train. So what we actually did is we instantiated our, or we used our build agent function to set up a new DQN model. And that was that up here. And we passed through our model as well as our actions. We then compiled it and we passed through our optimizer. So this was that Atom optimizer that we imported right at the start. And we also passed through the metrics that we wanna track. So in this case, it's mean absolute error. Then we use the fit function to kick off the training. And to that, we pass through our entire environment, the number of steps we wanna take, 
whether or not we want to visualize it. So we'll take a look at that in a second. And we also specified verbose as one. So we don't want full logging, we want a little bit of logging. Now what we can do is just let that go ahead and train to take a couple of minutes and then we should have a fully built reinforcement learning model. Five minutes later. Sweet, so that's our reinforcement learning model now done, dusted and trained. So all up, it took about 256 seconds to go and train. And you can see in our fourth interval that we're accumulating a reward of about 200. Now what we can go and do is actually print out and see what the, our total scores were. So remember when we started out up here, so just taking random steps, we were getting about a maximum score of about 51. But that's not all that great considering that the total maximum score for the game is about 200. So let's go and test this out and see what this actually looks like or how it's actually performing. So we can do that using the dqn.test method. So let's try that out. All right, so that's looking better already. So you can see in virtually every single episode, we're getting a score of about 200 and our mean is 200. So what we did there in order to test that out is we accessed our DQN model and we used the test method. To that, we passed through our actual environment, the number of games that we wanna run. So in this case, they're called episodes. So we ran 100 games uh, and whether or not we wanna visualize it. Then what we did is we outputted our mean result. Now, if we wanted to actually visualize what the difference is, we can do that as well. And you can see our model's performing way better. So you can see it's actually able to balance the pole a whole lot better than what it was before when it was just randomly sort of flailing about. We can test that out again. So this time, rather than doing five episodes, say we wanted to um, 15, for example. So you can see that our model, again, it's performing way better than what it was initially. So it's actually able to reiterate itself and re sort of balance it and make sure that that pole stays straight. Brings a tear to my eye, it's so good. Sweet, so that's all done. Now, what happens if we actually wanted to go and save this model away and use it later on? Say, for example, we wanted to go and deploy it into production. Well, what we can actually do is we can actually save the weights from our DQN model and then reload them later on to try to test them out. So we can do that using the save weights method from our DQN model. So let's go on ahead and save our weights. Then what we'll do is we'll blast away all of the stuff that we just created and we'll rebuild it by reloading our weights. So we've now gone and saved our weight. So if we actually take a look in our folder, you can see that we've gone and generated two different H5F files. So these basically allow us to save our reinforcement learning model weights. Now, if we wanted to go and rebuild our agent, first up, let's start by deleting our model, deleting our environment and deleting our DQN agent. And then what we can do is rebuild it using all the functions that we had and reload those weights to test it out. So if we go and do that, so you can see if we go and try to use our dqn.test method, there's nothing there because we've then gone and deleted it. But what we can do is we can go and rebuild that environment and test it out. So let's go and do that. Perfect, so we've now gone and reinstantiated all of our models. So we first up, we built our environment, we extracted our actions and our states just like we did before. Then we used our build model and our build agent functions to go and rebuild our deep learning model and reinstantiate our DQN agent. And then last but not least, we compiled it. Now what we can do is actually reload our weights into our model and then test it out again. So in order to do that, we can use the dqn.load weights method. So before up here, we use save weights. Now we can load our weights in order to retest this out. And the file that we're gonna to pass to our load weights method is the one that we exported out here. So we can copy that in and paste that here. And now we've gone and reloaded our weights. We can actually go and test out our environment again. 
So ideally what we should get is similar results. So again, you can see it's performing well. It's performing just as well as what it did before we deleted our weights and now we went and reloaded them. And that about wraps up this video. So we covered a bunch of stuff. So specifically, we went and installed our dependencies. We then created a random environment using OpenAI Gym and we got about a maximum score of about 51. We then built a deep learning model using Keras and then used Keras RL to train that using policy-based reinforcement learning. And then last but not least, we went and reloaded that agent from memory. So that allows you to work with this inside of a production environment if you wanna go and deploy it. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. If you do have any questions or need any help, be sure to drop a mention in the comments below and I'll get right back to you. And all the course materials, including the GitHub repository, as well as links to documentation are available in the description below. So you can get a kickstart and get up and running with your reinforcement learning model. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.